All the features discussed in this video are from the last updated pre alpha patch 1.0 shown on May 28, 2020, and are subject to change in future patches. The comment section is available for questions about any of the content in this discussion video. I read and reply to all comments, so a link to my sources will be offered to you directly if you think I'm talking a load of bollocks. Hello again all, and welcome back to the channel. Today we'll be going over what we know about citizenship in Ashes of Creation. I'll cut this video into three sections this time. How to obtain citizenship, how it affects your gameplay, and every single minute detail that there is possibly to know about citizenship. But it's only pre-alpha! How can you know every single detail? Fine. Instead, will go into the potential citizenship could provide your characters, using systems we're already familiar with in other MMOs. So let's get straight into it. How does one obtain citizenship? When a node levels up to level 3, the village stage, players are able to purchase a house from the node. Owning a house then allows you to declare citizenship for the node that you've settled in. Becoming a citizen is a huge commitment for your account as you can only be a citizen of one node per server. You can, however, own houses in multiple nodes. In the PAX East Q&A, Stephen clarified that as a node becomes more popular and the number of citizens increase, there will be an ever-increasing soft cap affecting the cost for new potential citizens entering the node. And in the March Q&A in 2017, Stephen also stated that you don't have to become a citizen of a node. You can be a murder hobo, if you so wish. However, there is a couple of ways to change citizenship to another node. The first way is a simple one. You're able to renounce your citizenship whenever you like. However, this would put you on a two week cooldown before you can become a citizen of another node. This is to prevent the player base from leaving and joining nodes whenever they like. Intrepid Studios want the citizenship to be a meaningful choice on your account. The other way to lose citizenship is uh, slightly more drastic. It is if your node is sieged and destroyed. You lose the citizenship because the node goes back down to level zero. So if you're sieging a node, you bet your ass its citizens are going to defend it. The next topic we're going to talk about is how citizenship affects your gameplay. The main reason you want to become a citizen for a node is to take part in the node's government circle. All nodes have an elected mayor from level 3 onwards, and only a citizen of the node may become a mayor. Additionally, only citizens may vote for who they want to be elected. This opens up a huge amount of potential rivalries, camaraderies, and even sabotage from enemy nodes as an infinite number of outcomes can happen due to player behavior. This makes me really excited to see how streamers, their followers, and their griefers are going to affect the overall dynamic of server nodes in Ashes of Creation. Another major gameplay feature affecting citizenship is the tax system. The goal of the tax is to exert financial pressure on node populations by making make taxes, taxes increasingly expensive as nodes advance, rather than putting in place hard population caps. This sentence was read directly from the wiki, and if I'm honest, after hours of staring at the statement, I still have no idea what it really means. Choose one. I'm so sorry. <laughs> I feel like I've let you all down. Or. This could just be because we don't have a practical example of the tax system working because we're still in pre-alpha. If you think you can explain it easily or your name is Jarlon, then let me know in the comments section below and I'll give it a cheeky little pin with a heart. From the 2017 interview with MMO Game. They state that the benefits for becoming a citizen are as follows. However, we're yet to receive clarification on what any of this means. Therefore, I'll be covering this again in the future, so feel free to subscribe if you haven't already. No. No, seriously. I've got like five more videos planned for the next couple of weeks alone, so uh, go right on ahead there and hit subscribe. Thanks. Anyway, the final section of today's video, I wanted to try and compare the citizenship system to other games out there and see if we can give ourselves an idea of what becoming a citizen may bring us throughout the development of Ashes of Creation. The system is pretty unique, however. I think the closest way I can describe becoming a citizen is in Black Desert Online. Oh no! He's using BDO again! 
this guy is obsessed with this game. Jesus Christ. <coughs> yes, yes, you're right. BDO is my current game of choice, okay? Leave me alone, please. In BDO, as your account progresses, you obtain what is called contribution points. These are points that you allocate into nodes to purchase certain buildings. And one of the purchasable buildings is a storage warehouse, which increases the amount of bank slots that a city is able to hold. An account usually only has enough contribution to max out one city of bank space, essentially pseudo making you a citizen of this city because all of your materials are stored here. Additionally, your Imperial Hand in Daily, which is basically free money every day, is also city-based because moving them to another city is impossible to do on the fly. Having a player commit to a city like this tends to mean their guildies and friends are also situated here, creating a social dynamic of seeing and interacting with the same people on a day-to-day -day basis. This is exactly the kind of dynamic Intrepid Studios are aiming to create. However, their scope is going much further beyond than anything BDO will ever be able to achieve. And that's pretty much all I got for you today on citizenship. Thanks all for watching. Next video coming up is going to be all about guild Patreons. So I'll catch you in the next one for that in a few days. See ya!